Hello, little learners. Welcome back to our TK and Pre-K classroom. My name is Miss Lara, and I'm going to be your teacher today. Hello. So we have a very fun-filled day planned today. Now, when I put my hand to my ear, I want you to tell me your name so I can try to guess your special letter. Are you ready? Well, here we go. Oh, I heard it way over here. Let me see if I got it right. You'll have to tell me. I think your special letter is big line down, big line down, and a little line across. What letter have I made? H, that's right. Did I get it right? Yes, no. If I didn't, don't worry. I'll keep going. You'll find your special letter here soon. Now today is day two of the three days that we're going to be together. So let me add a magnet to my board. Here's one, and I think I'll add it on top. So one and one make two. And all this week, because I missed Johnny Appleseed's birthday, we're going to learn about apples. And maybe on Friday, we'll make a delicious apple pie with some candles in it just to make Johnny Appleseed feel a little bit better. So we're gonna have a project. We're gonna make some apple pie today, but not the kind that you can eat. Okay, now before we get started with all of our learning, I have a song that I've been sharing with you. Do you remember the tune? Have you ever seen an apple? And I've been teaching you the colors in English and in Spanish. So let me see if I get them right this time. Here are my apples, and if you don't have apples, get your fists out so you can do apple motion like this. Here we go. Have you ever seen an apple, an apple, an apple? Have you ever seen an apple that grows on a tree? Here we are. A red one. A yellow one. A pink one. A green one. Have you ever seen an apple, an apple, an apple? Have you ever seen an apple that grows on a tree? So here are our colors. We said them in English. Let's practice them in Spanish now, which is the only other language I know. If you know how to say them in another language, let me know. Okay, red is rojo. Yellow is amarillo. Pink is rosa, and green is verde. So hopefully by the end of the week, you'll know those colors too. I think it's time for Miss Maria's letter. I wonder what book she's going to share with us this week. Let's see. Ooh, it says, Dear Miss Lara, right here. Now do you remember we're learning to track our words? So I want you to get your five fingers out and your pointer finger is the one right next to your thumb. We call it your thumb's best friend. So here's your pointer. When you read, we start at the left and slide to the right. And when you get to the end, you don't keep going. No, that would be silly. You stop and you return, sweep. Go to the left and go to the right again. Okay, let's read our letter. Dear Miss Lara, do you like apple pie? Oh, I do, I love apple pie. Well, I traveled all around the world to gather the freshest ingredients for a superb apple pie. Now ingredients are the materials or things that you use to make something like an apple pie it would have apples and cinnamon and butter and salt. I wonder if that's what our book is going to be about. Maybe I will save you a slice. Yay, I would love to eat a slice of apple pie. Love a friend. And I think our friend is gonna be in the char character in the book we have today. Our book that I wanted to share with you is called How to Make an Apple Pie and See the World. Well, that would be so exciting. So you can see there's a little girl on the front cover. And this is a huge parachute. And it looks like she's holding a rolling pin and a spoon and has a suitcase. 
So I wonder if she's going to travel the world by airplane and then float down somewhere. I can't wait to find out. So today I have a video story for you. So we're going to watch it together and you let me know if you like the book or not. So let's watch. Well, give me a it's chance. story time. How to Make an Apple Pie and See the World by Marjorie Priceman. Retold by Miss Lara. Down came an apple. Mmm, it was good. Making an apple pie is really very easy. First, get all the ingredients at the market, mix them well, bake, and serve. Unless, of course, the market is closed. Gone fishing! In that case, you'll need to catch a steamship bound for Europe. Use the six days on board to brush up on your Italian. Felici di essere di nuovo insieme. If you time it right, you'll arrive in Italy at harvest time. Find a farm deep in the countryside. Gather some superb semolina wheat. An armful or two will do. Then hop on a train to France to locate a chicken. French chickens lay elegant eggs and you only want the finest ingredients for your pie. Coax the chicken to give you an egg or better yet, bring the chicken with you. There's less chance of breaking the egg that way. Get to Sri Lanka any way you can. The best cinnamon in the world is made there from the bark of the Kurundu tree. Find a Kurundu tree and peel off some bark. If a leopard is napping beneath the tree, be very quiet. Hitch a ride to England. Make the acquaintance of a cow. Hello. You'll know she's an English cow from her good manners and charming accent. Pleasure to meet you. Ask if you can borrow a cup or two of milk. Even better, bring the whole cow with you for the freshest possible results. Stow away on a banana boat headed for Jamaica. On your way there, you can pick up some salt. Fill a jar with salty seawater. When the boat docks in Jamaica, walk to the nearest sugar plantation. Tell everyone about the pie you're making. Then go into the fields and cut a few stalks of sugar cane. Better fly home. We don't want the ingredients to spoil. Wait a minute, aren't you forgetting something? What about the apples? Have the pilot drop you off in Vermont. You won't have to go far to find an apple orchard. Pick eight rosy apples from the top of the tree. Give one to the chicken, one to the cow, and eat one yourself. That leaves five for the pie. Then hurry home. Now all you have to do is mill the wheat into flour, grind the karunji bark into cinnamon, evaporate the seawater from the salt, boil the sugar cane, persuade the chicken to lay an egg, milk the cow, Turn the milk into butter. Slice the apples, mix the ingredients, and bake the pie. While the pie is cooling, invite some friends over to share it with you.
remember that apple pie is delicious topped with vanilla ice cream, which you can get at the market. But if the market's closed, you can eat it plain. The end. Shake, shake, shaking the apples down, shaking apples down to the ground. So what did you think of this story? The little girl traveled all around the world to gather ingredients for what looked like a delicious apple pie. I'm lucky, I just have to go to the supermarket. Now we're going to recreate the travels that she did on this map here. Now of course, this map is a printed version of what our world actually looks like. It doesn't look like this flat. Our Earth is round, kind of like this globe, but it's flat here so that we can see all the pieces. So I'm going to look at my book. Now do you remember the first place the little girl went to? She had to gather some semolina wheat. And where did she say was the best place to gather wheat? Do you remember? She went on a steamship over to Italy. So here she is. I'll show you on the map where that is. So she gathered some wheat in Italy, which is right over here. And I always remember where Italy is because it's the only place on the map that looks like a boot. So if you have a map at home, maybe you can borrow this book from the library and have a helper, a parent helper, show you where it's at. So she went to get wheat and then she had to go get a chicken because she needed eggs for her pie. Now she went to a place where they have elegant chickens. She had to go by train. She went to France. Now the French are known for being very fancy. I don't know if it's true, I've never been there, but that's what it says in the book. Now she's gonna go right over here to France from Italy over here, and she's gonna get an elegant French hen and she's gonna take it with her so the eggs don't break. After that, she needs to get the best cinnamon because a good apple pie has the most delicious cinnamon. And I learned that cinnamon actually comes from the bark of the Karundu tree. And she has to go all the way to Sri Lanka, which is right over here in the map. If you can find it, it's right near India. So she travels there and takes a little bit of bark from the Karundu tree and grind it to make her cinnamon. And of course, there's a sleeping leopard right beneath her. She was so brave. Must have been some good cinnamon. After that, she meets a very proper cow in England, right? Because she needs milk. And she asks, may I please have a cup or two of milk? So she goes all the way over here to get the cow and she takes the cow with her. And then she goes on a ship. Where is she going now? What ingredient does she need next? Well, she gets some salt water on her way to Jamaica. She needs some sugar cane. Now Jamaica is right over here. Jamaica, that's where she goes next. So she's been here, 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 all gathering ingredients. Now Jamaica has the best sugar stock so she can make her sugar. And there was one important ingredient that she forgot. And she needs to get that here in the United States where they make the most delicious apples according to the book. It is a Vermont orchard, an apple orchard. So she goes all the way back to the United States to get her apples. Does she have all the ingredients she needs now? She does. Then she needs to prepare the mill, the flour, churn the butter, slice the apples, put them in the oven to get a most delicious apple pie that she can share with her friends. So I'm glad that you took a trip with me all around the world on the map. I hope that you share this book with your family and maybe point out some places you would like to visit. Now for our project today, we're going to be making an apple pie. 
Not the kind that you can eat, although it does still smell good, but the kind that you can hang on your walls as you talk to your family about this story. So come join me in the project, please. Here we go. Now for this activity, let's see, you are going to need a couple of paper plates, like the ones I have here. You can use these kind of thicker ones or the thinner ones, whatever you have handy. You're going to need some brown paint, some red paint, a paintbrush, an apple, a fork, and some cinnamon. Now, I didn't have any cinnamon, and I don't have access to a karundu tree, so I brought nutmeg. Just use whatever spice that reminds you of apples and fall and deliciousness. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna take our paper plate and we're gonna make the bottom of our pie. And it's an apple pie, so we're gonna use some apples to stamp on our apples right here. So here is what I did. I took an apple and I cut it in half. Then I tried not to eat it because apples are delicious. So next, I'm gonna put a fork in my apple like this. And that's what I'm gonna to use to stamp it. You don't need the fork, but it does keep your hands clean. Then I'm gonna need some red paint. So let me grab my red paint and I'm gonna put it right on my paper plate. Here we are. And I'm gonna smear the paint all over my apple and I'll show you what it looks like just a bit. Here we are, see? Now I have an apple stamp. I'm gonna put my apple stamp right on the bottom here of my pie. Doesn't look much like apples here, but it's a fun experience to do with little ones because they'll tell you, oh my gosh, that was my apple pie that I made. I stamped it with actual apples and some of the seeds might get caught in there. So keep stamping away. And I think I might have put a bit too much paint. Oh no. Let's see. Is there such a thing as too much paint? I don't know. It reminds me of that story, too much glue. And the little girl on there who would say, I need glue for all my projects. Or was that a little boy? <laughs> I guess I related to that story today with a lot of paint. So you can use a smaller apple. You can actually use a little bit of sponge if you want. But it's so much fun to use non-traditional materials to make art. Things like apples. And I've used Q-tips, all kinds of things. So get creative with recycled materials around you. Oh, and I even have a little seed that stayed on there. All right, I'll show you what it looks like now. So it looks like it's starting to look like an apple pie a little bit, but it needs a crust. Oh, that's right. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another paper plate like this, and then I'm gonna cut out a triangle. Now you'll remember a triangle looks like this. It has three sides, and this has the rounded part of the plate but normally it would be straight across so you can really see the three sides. Now I'll show you what that looks like. You're gonna take your plate with your helper hand and you're gonna to cut to the middle, the center, just right here in the center here. And go straight down. Now when I used to do this with three and four and five year olds, I would always get some funky triangles and that's okay. It's just that we wanna see the apples on the bottom that you stamped. Okay, so here, this is gonna be our crust. Now, the thing to remember is when you paint this apple pie, you're going to want to paint the side that kind of points up, that curves up like this, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it on top to make a pie. So, see, not this side, but the side that points up like this. Okay, so let's get our brown paint, and to make this project extra fun, we're gonna add some spice. Like I said, nutmeg, pumpkin pie spice, cinnamon if you have it. I think I used all my cinnamon already. So let's put some spice. The more you add, the more fragrant or smelly it's gonna be. Whew, what a nice change from the vinegar I used yesterday. Okay, next I'm gonna mix it up, I'm gonna show you. <laughs> 
this is a wonderful sensory activity for children because it kind of activates their sense of smell and they get to be creative. Ooh, it's creating a thicker paint than I had. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint on our crust. So here we go. It smells beautiful. You can even add a little bit of white to create a different hue. Let me move this fork here. Our apple stamp out of the way. <laughs> I'm gonna paint all of it around. Now remember, I tend to go kind of fast with these activities. I want you to get a general idea and be inspired. But if you wanted to follow along, and I'm going too fast for you because you have to stop and get the spice or stop and get the paint, remember you can check us out on the Valley PBS website and you can actually pause it there and come back to the project. Here is what it's looking like so far. Very delicious, and I have a special surprise for you at the end because no pie would be complete without what we're going to add. Okay, this is what it's looking like. Gonna get all the corners all around. Here we go. Look. Ooh, that's a delicious crust. Now another idea is you can actually take strips of brown paper and put it across and make a lattice crust. You can even do that right here, or you can do that on top. You can use torn paper, so many different ways that you can make your pie your way. Okay, the next thing you're gonna need is some glue because we have to attach it or adhere it to the top here. So let me add some glue all the way around. Come on out, glue, don't be shy. There it goes. And I'm just gonna do a steady stream of glue around. You can use a stapler as well, but we're just gonna use some glue. Ooh, and I put the glue where there's not gonna be any glued on parts, but that's okay. It will dry clear. So I'm just gonna hold it there for 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. Okay, oh, should be secure enough. Starting to look like a pie, right? But it needs one more thing. What do you think it needs? Do you remember in this story? The little girl tried to get some vanilla ice cream and the market was closed. She had to eat it plain. Well, we're going to add some whipped cream or vanilla ice cream to the top. For that, you're going to need cotton balls. So what I like to do with my cotton is I kind of make it look more realistic is I kind of separate it out so it looks fluffier and airier, just like that. Now, of course, you're gonna wanna let your crust dry before you add things to it, but I'm gonna go ahead and be dangerous and glue right on the wet paint. I might add just a little bit more here. There's more glue. Put some more, should we add some more? Okay, so you don't even have to try to convince me when it comes to whipped cream or vanilla ice cream, we can add as much as we'd like. This is the best kind of pie because you can look at it and smell it and your pants still fit afterwards. Okay, put it right there. A little bit more and then I'll show you the finished product and give you some book recommendations. Here we are. So there is our apple pie. Of course, you can attach a piece of paper to the bottom and write about your favorite part of the story to keep the learning going at home. And speaking of that, do you remember the book that we read the other day, Apples? Well, I wanted to show you that at the very back of the book, if I can find it, so here's the different apples, but it has a recipe for apple pie that you can actually follow along to. I will find it right here. So check out your local library and see if you can find it. Let's see, I'm not finding it here. There are several online as well where you can look up how to make a delicious, for real, that you can eat apple pie. So check out this book at the local library or on your Sora app. Where are you, apple pie recipe? Oh, here it is. If you look for it, it's called an apple a day, and it tells you all the ingredients that you'll need. Okay, remember to come 
this week and check me out online as well on the Valley PBS website. And now our episodes are on YouTube. Until I see you again, boys and girls, Masara sends you a big squeeze and a big smooch and reminds you to read, to play, to use your five senses and think like a scientist every day. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.